Hey there all you YouTubers, this is the show for crank addicts like me and hopefully like you. Today I am going to show you how to convert your 700R4 wimpy wimpy transmission in your four wheel drive Chevy to a much stronger 4L80E transmission. transmission out of my Suburban and this is a 4L 80E out of a 2002 Silverado 2500 heavy duty. Why do you want to convert from a 700R4 to a 4L 80E? Well the 700R4 is based on the Turbo Hydromatic 350. The 4L 80E is based on the Turbo Hydromatic 400. The 400 historically has been a lot stronger transmission than the 350. Now I'm not saying a 350 can't be beat up to be as strong as a stock 400, but dollar for dollar you're always going to get more um, strength and towing capacity out of the 400 based units. Okay, I said this 4L80E stock can handle uh, more horsepower, more torque, more towing than the majority of the heavy duty rebuilds on the 700 R4. I know there's a few guys out there claiming they can tow 6,000 pounds with a 700 R4. I've done it, but I've also killed my transmission doing it. So, and like I said, this thing here has all the best parts. I mean, it's got the Sonic servos, it's got the um, five roller pinions front and rear, uh, it's got the heavy duty clutches, it's got uh, everything good in there. I spent a lot of money on this transmission, but I'm done with it. So, take it for what it is, I'm going for a Lady E. Now there's going to be a few difficulties when converting from this 700R4 to the 4 l 80 e The first one is computer control. The 4 l 80 e needs a computer to operate. Now it is possible to rig together a uh, push button system so that whenever you want to shift gears from first to second, second to third, third to fourth, you just push a button on the dash and it'll shift for you that way. Um, but that can get to be a real pain in the butt real quick. So I'm assuming you want automatic operation. So you're going to need a standalone computer. You know, um, fast sells a good one. Um, the easy TCI, uh, that's the TCI version, uh, sells one. There's quite a few companies out there selling standalone computers for these transmissions. You can also build your own computer. Uh, I've heard that Micro Squirt can be modified to control a transmission as well. So, a couple of options there if you want to do it on the cheap. Okay, so, differences between these guys. Well, one thing, this 4L80E is going to be uh, about five inches longer than your 700R4. Different output shafts. The 700R4 has a 27 spline output and the 400s and the 4L80E is going to have a 32 spline output. So uh, you're going to have to convert your transfer case to fit this larger spline here. Now if you have an old 70s transfer case that was matched up to a 400 transmission, then you're in great shape, you're good to go. Uh, but most transfer cases are going to require a different input shaft. Okay, now I'll show you that real quick. All right. Likewise, uh, you have two-wheel drive transmissions and four-wheel drive transmissions. This is a two-wheel drive transmission. It has a front speed sensor and a rear speed sensor. Both of these need to be hooked up in order for your computer to work. The two-wheel drive units have them both on the main case. If you get a four-wheel drive unit, then that four-wheel drive unit is going to have the second speed sensor hooked up to your transfer case. Okay. Now, if you're going to use that transfer case, then that's great, wonderful. But 99% of those transfer cases are going to be driver's side drop for an independent front suspension. 
If you're watching this video, then you've probably got solid axles front and rear and you want a passenger side drop. So those passenger side drop transfer cases are not going to have a speed sensor. So you're going to want to pick up a two-wheel drive unit that has both speed sensors already good to go. All right. All right. Um, what else? Okay. So this is a two-wheel drive unit. And... Um, this shaft here is much, much too long to work with um, my transfer case. Now, if you're lucky, you might be able to go in there and just cut off a couple of inches on your shaft and still be okay. But most of the times, you're going to lose too many splines. So, you are going to need to go out there and purchase yourself a four-wheel drive output shaft for your two-wheel drive transmission. Okay, so I'm going to be taking this transmission apart, um, swapping this shaft out for the four-wheel drive version, and that thing will line up about, well here's a speed sensor, this is the reluctor. It will line up about like this. So you can see, considerably shorter. And that's what you need uh, to make uh, this transmission work with your transfer case. Let's go to the transfer case and I'll show you that new input shaft. Okay, this is my new 32 spline input shaft for my transfer case. I'll be dropping that in there soon. Uh, but I won't be able to put it together because this is what I found in the bottom of my transfer case. All those little needle bearings went oops, somewhere. And that somewhere is gonna be inside this counter shaft here, the one that slides back and forth. This thing is full of needle bearings and somehow those guys escaped. I'm not even sure how or where, but I got to buy a set of snap ring pliers online. The ones I use for my transmissions won't quite open it up far enough to pull it off. That's as far as I can get it, just right there. So I got some new pliers coming in and then we'll fix the needle bearings. I got some new needle bearings already off eBay. This is just half a set, but that should be more than enough, I hope. <laughs> I may be wrong when I get in there, but I'm hoping that'll be enough to get this thing going again. And then we'll be able to get this truck on the road. Okay, well, I pulled the flywheel off of that 6.5. The reason I did that is because the bolt holes are way off. And I'm talking, gosh, probably a half inch all the way around or more. Um, Boy, I don't know. I wouldn't feel safe enlarging these that much to get that thing uh, bolted on. So I went online to eBay and I bought this new flywheel here. This guy here came off of a, uh, a 2000 model 6.5 turbo diesel. Um, supposedly it had a 4L80 behind it. So let's get rid of this one and see how this measures up. Ah, oh, look at that. Perfect all around. So um, for your flex plate on your 6.2 or early 6.5, you will need to find a 2000 to 2005 model uh, 6.5 out of a Hummer, a box truck, maybe a dually, uh, pre Duramax dually, and uh, get that flex plate to use in your older vehicle. All right, well, my throttle position sensor off of the 95 turbo diesel seems to be working well. Um, there's three wires for this throttle position, gray, blue, and black. I hooked up black to black the gray to red, and the blue middle wire is going to my uh, white wire from my T2 
TCI box. So uh, the red from my TCI box is the five volt signal. It goes to the throttle position sensor. The blue out is the actual signal back to the computer. And of course the black is just a ground wire. And I didn't have a connector, so I just, you know, bought some uh, female bullet connectors and just plugged them in. So that should work just fine. All right, guys. Well, when you uh, order your new front input shaft for your transfer case, uh, you're going to have to get some, a bearing for it. There's a bearing here and a bearing in the front. If you just order a front input shaft bearing, you're going to be getting one of two big bearings that goes on the snap here. Okay? So you want to make sure you order the input shaft pocket bearing, which is this little guy that's going to fit down there and support your main shaft on your crankshaft. So, pocket bearing, regular bearing. Got some new pliers. These are Protos J250 made by Stanley. Hopefully these guys will work to remove this snap ring. As the other pair I bought, some fancy German ones, did not work. All right, here we go. $50 snap ring pliers. Moment of truth. Oh, come on. I think it's gonna work. Oh, so close. I think it's gonna do it though. That was really close. That's the closest that I've had it so far. So close. <clears throat> Come on. <clears throat> All right. Come on. Boy, I tell you, that is a stubborn snap ring. Believe how tight that is. Come on out of there. Wow. That was crazy tight. All right, let's make some room so those little needle bearings are gonna go everywhere. Okay. There's a couple already. Don't think they're supposed to be in this part of the assembly. And they look a little chewed up. Here's one that's been broken in three pieces. One, two, three. Right, oh, here comes a couple of spacers. Here they come. That's not good. Oh, man, oh, man, oh, man. All right. All right, well, it doesn't look too bad. It doesn't look too worn. That's good. I was worried about the shaft. Good, good, good. All right, well, this is my 4L80 transmission <laughs> laid out across my bench. You know, from the, uh, the pump to your planetaries, your clutches, all the way back to the uh, rear output shaft on this little guy here. So this is the very back of the transmission. This is the second to the back of the transmission. <laughs> this guy gave me fits to get out of there because there's a bolt that goes through the um, valve body area 
that bolts into this thing here for support. I think it's like called the rear support or something like that. But uh, it was completely galled or who knows what in there. Um, but uh, yeah, I wound up having to drill it out. So um, I've got another bolt for it and I am going to try to match those threads and see if I can't uh, re-tap that and save it. But otherwise, I may need to get another one of these guys here. Hopefully not. We'll see. And because I had to uh, drill that bolt out, it's hidden right back here in the back. That's a mess. But it's flat now, and it should bolt in there. This doesn't actually seal anything. It just supports that rear shaft. Uh, there's a hole going through here, so any leaks around here doesn't, don't really matter. So that should still work. That should still support it. But, you know, it's supposed to look like this guy here, nice and pretty. So, yeah, it's a little boogered up, but wow. I never had a bolt quite like that before in a transmission. That was unusual. Uh, this unit has been rebuilt at some point in its life. Uh, which is kind of weird because it supposedly only has 32,000 miles on this transmission. So, yeah, whatever. Popping the snap ring off. And this chef should just slide on out of there. There we go. Oh, got a little bearing here we got to hang on to. Got a little race back over that roller. Okay. And make sure everything looks good. I like it. Going back together. I should say, now that we have the output shaft swapped out, we're just gonna drop it back together. I'm not gonna take apart any of these drum assemblies. I'm gonna leave all those alone. So I finally got this thing together and running and I tell you it runs great. Let me show you what we did here. Okay. So I got my uh, transfer case back together now. New bearings for that main shaft. And uh, it feels really, really good. Uh, it's leaking a little bit around the seal here, but that's okay. I can replace that seal anytime I need to. Just pull the drive shaft off and that's easy to replace. Um, I moved this cross member back one hole. Let me show you that. <clears throat> All right. So these are the original two holes here for the drive for this cross member. So I just pushed it back one, drilled a couple of new bolts in this corner here, here and on the other side, and just rebolted that. There's the 4L80. <sighs> On the 4L80, I uh, was able to take the front, um, the feed, I guess, the out transmission line, and bend it around. I was able to reconnect it. On the return, I had to get a piece of braided line and, and tap that in, tie that in there. And I just got this thing held up right now with zip screws, zip ties. I still need to put a cover over the torque converter so I can hook up my uh, supports. But honestly, I'm not sure what all these supports do. I mean, does it really make that much of a difference? I don't know. Maybe it does. Um, but I'll see what I can do with that. Okay. Um, what else? I need to reattach my support from the um, bell housing up here to the transfer case. That support mounts right here on the side of the transfer case. So it goes all the way across to the bell housing on the transmission. Uh, my uh, gear selector, four-wheel drive, two-wheel drive selector here. 
my uh, current shaft is too short. I know, my wife's been telling me that for years. But, uh, so I need a little, little bit of extension. So I'll be playing doctor and making that a little longer. And over here on the linkage, what I did to make this linkage work is originally chopped it thinking that I had to reposition this to get the proper articulation. But before you chop your old shaft, just take your um, mounting uh, bracket here and again, just shift it down one bolt hole. You gotta drill a second hole here and bolt it back through. See if that'll work for you. That may be all you need because I think I've got this shaft back in its original orientation because, yeah, okay. Even I mess up, go figure, okay? But that's working now. Um, I've got my wiring just kind of zip tied to the frame rail. For now, I'll be using uh, some uh, wire clamps later on. And, uh, oh, my transmission mount. Here we go, here's my transmission mount in the back. Remember this thing is moved back about, what is that? Five inches, something like that? Five, six inches? So I made my own custom transmission mount and bolted it to the uh, adapter, transfer case adapter. And to the cross member, that thing just bolts right on up there. So that's looking really good. Uh, still need to install my front drive shaft. And I'm using this factory torque converter. It's a truck torque converter, but it seems to be very, very peppy in this uh, application. So I'm not gonna go with a lower stall. That is working great for me. And what else? Um, so anyway, um, if you look at this transmission here, you can see I've got the original speed sensor hooked up. The secondary speed sensor is back here. That's hooked up. It's shifting great. I do not have the neutral safety switch. Installed as a big black box that goes in here. I might just take these bolts out. I guess I don't need those bolts anymore. Just take those bolts out. There we go. Done. From my, from my pocket. So the neutral safety switch and its hot wires are not needed. Um, and what else? That's about it. Oh, let me show you under the hood. Okay. Hood has a security feature here. There we go. The Arthur Fonz are really a security feature. Okay, so got my TCI box just kind of set in the corner right now. Now that I've confirmed that it's running great, I'm going to be mounting that thing uh, to this little plastic, um, I guess that's an insulating pad or something. Um, I've got this thing tied in to my uh, engine harness somewhere. Here we go. It has the little cable where the middle wire was hot with ignition, but I'm concerned that uh, it's not putting out the amps that I need to power this box because I keep losing my link when I'm trying to data record going down the road. I'll probably be putting in a 12 volt relay to power this thing instead. Anyway, uh, the wires go across here and I've got them going to my new TPS sensor, okay? This sensor here is also out of a, a Hummer and I just took some um, female plugs and just stuck them into the, the harness here. Eventually I'll be buying a pigtail assembly so I can splice and do that right. But it's working so I'm so happy. One thing that makes me mad is that this uh, 4L80E came out of a Silverado with a uh, 6.0 and as such, the transmission dipstick tube would not fit. Um, so I bought this universal thing off eBay and I cannot get the dipstick in there. I have bent the tip of it left and right and forward and backwards and it will not go. Plus, the hole down in the middle of that dipstick tube is so small that it takes half an hour to put in four quarts of fluid, which is ridiculous. So I'm going to be sending that back and I'm going to try to get a dipstick tube off a of Hummer and we'll see if that six fits this 6.5 better. 
So there you have it. Um, and that's my whole project here. Uh, 700R4 to 4L80E. It's working great. This thing has never shifted so well in its life. And I should be able to tow 10,000 pounds with this setup now. So if that's what you're hoping to do with your old Suburban or Blazer or whatever truck, then definitely check out that 4L80E swap. Um, let me know in the comments if you need any help. And uh, thanks for watching.